This stuff is unbelievable. Okay, so my Brussels sprouts are ready. So this is what they look like now. I'm gonna finish this off before I do the part. So, so this is what it Who wants to come clean up for a free dinner? Okay, so what we do, these, I don't need a sauce. These are so good. This is like candy to me. But for people that really say they hate Brussels sprouts and vegetables, let me show you what you can do. Sometimes you don't see it in there and then it gets cooked for months until you find it. What I like to do is put on a little bit of a good reduced balsamic vinegar. My favorite flavor for this is smoked hickory. It kind of has a smoky barbecue sauce flavor. And, you know, you can measure if you want, but you really don't have to. Just, you know, that one tablespoon is probably enough, too, if you like a lot of salt. And then just a little squirt of your favorite mustard. So equal amounts, like one tablespoon, one tablespoon, or two, two. The original recipe had you cooking this in the oven, and it took 45 minutes, and it was just such a mess. It's so Zena invented this version. And then you can just shake it up so it gets coated. Oh, this is, you know what? I'd rather eat this than a dessert. That's how delicious it is. Get a plate. Mm. See, to me, this is what I want to eat. It's so good. Balsamic Dijon glazed Brussels sprouts. So, and by the way, you don't have to do it with any sauce. You can do it with any vegetable. When I teach at Rancho La Puerta, if you're ever interested in going in my group, let me know. We have wonderful groups there where we all cook together. We go out in the organic garden and we pick whatever vegetable we're going to meet, make for dinner that night. And Brussels sprouts aren't always in season. So we've done this with um, turnips. We've done it with butternut squash, with broccoli, with cauliflower with just about every vegetable. So I've got all my ingredients here. I'm just gonna process this until it's nice and smooth. When I do the Q and A, maybe I can sit down because I'm getting tired soon. Sure. <laughs> yeah. That didn't take long at all. I'm just gonna get a running out of spatulas. Alexa off. Okay, so my polenta bake is ready. Turn my oven off. I never use the oven, so how do you? Nope. And now I only use my gravel. How do we turn this oven off, babe? Oh boy. You're like, what kind of chef is that? She can't even turn the oven off, but I really can't. That's a light. It's a settings. Sabbath sound. Nope. It's got Wi Fi. Nope, that's the timer. Babe. I literally cannot, don't know how to turn my oven off. Start. Nope, cancel. Okay, hopefully that's off. All right, I'll just open that and I'll show it to you in a little bit. It's, you could maybe walk over to the oven actually, that might be easier. Look how beautiful that is. You do need to let it rest a little bit because otherwise when you, know, you want it to be like firm slices when you cut it. So we're just gonna let this settle here. All right, so this mousse, we want to stir a little bit because sometimes there's little pieces of tofu that didn't get fully blended. This will get much thicker. Like you can see like right here, a little piece of tofu or that might be cream cheese. So we're gonna let it go again. So when you put it in the refrigerator, it gets really thick, like a really thick mousse. 
Okay, so now let's plate it. And that's the last, that's the 10th recipe. The apple pie rice pudding isn't ready, but I can show it to you when it's done. But once I'm done plating this, then I can take questions. If you don't mind, I'm gonna sit down for them. So if you're doing individual ones, I recommend a pretty glass. You can often find these at the dollar store, just so people can see through. Let's see which one, probably this one. And so what I wanna do is I wanna start with some crumbs on the bottom of either the trifle bowl or the glass. As many or as few as you like. And then just to make it easier, I'm just gonna take a scoop. Now, once this sets up in the fridge, it's really thick and it's even easier to scoop. So I'm gonna do some of the mousse. Again, chilling it in advance, you get a more perfect uh, chilled top. Then banana. So I have this cool tool, you get perfect slices. However, with this, I like you to be able to see the banana through the glass. And so what I like to do is I like to push it sideways like this because I want you to be able to see the banana. So I cut them kind of thick and go all the way around. So you see I went all the way around and then some more crumbs. Some more mousse. Again, it's, it, there's no exact ratio. If you want more mousse, less crumbs, no crumbs, no banana, no problem. No banana. And few little crumbs on top. If you want a little more chopped, I have some chopped peanuts I could add, but I promise you, you will love this. So that is my demonstration. Everything is cooked. The rice pudding, as soon as it comes up to pressure, I'll show you. So if you have, I'm just wash my hand. If you have any questions on anything, I'm happy to answer. Thank you so much for having me. Appreciate your attention. Well, Thank you so much, Chef AJ. That was absolutely amazing and impressive that you got 10 recipes in 90 in minutes. 90 minutes, yeah. <laughs> yes, yes. I guess that's the power of mise en place. So uh, mise en place. There we go. Mise en place. So so um now we are gonna begin the the question and answer part of uh, of our session here. And what we're going to do is I'm going to be asking some questions as well as opening up to the audience. So if the audience would like to ask some questions, they can raise their hand. And, oh, actually, just real quickly, though, um, just a, a few quick things before we begin that is um, I'd like you to let us know where you can get your book and follow you on social media, as well as if we can get these recipes. Yes, yes. So I've, I've created a PDF. If you just write me at help, the word help at chefaj.com. We will get you the PDF of all the recipes with actually probably more than I did today because I wasn't sure. So my books, oh, I can't, uh, my books, I've got one more other than this called um, Unprocessed, which is over there. Amazon, for example, some Barnes and Noble, uh, the Barnes and Noble is by me, but not all of them. And uh, an ebook called A Date with Dessert. So those are where you can get them. And then I have a YouTube channel. I'm there every day, guys. Oh, here's Unprocessed. Unprocessed. That's my newest book. First one with colored photos and with a real publisher. And I'm on YouTube every single day from 11 to 12 Pacific time going live. I've done 1500 and some odd shows. 
and uh, I haven't missed a day since March 20th, 2020, and I hope to see how many years I can go without missing a day. Well, that's that's great. And they just look up Chef AJ and they'll find Chef you. Chef AJ, YouTube. yeah. Yeah, on YouTube. All right, perfect. So for our audience, if you'd like to ask any questions of Chef AJ, um, what you need to do is we will, we will not be taking questions from the chat. We will be taking questions by raising your hand in the Zoom. So if you don't know how to do that, at the bottom of the of the Zoom window, on the right-hand side, second over from the right, you'll see a reactions button and you'll click on that. And then from the pop-up window, you will choose raise hand and then we will we will answer questions based on the order in which you uh, in which you raise your hand. Uh, when it's your turn, I will unmute the prompt and have you state your name, where you're from, and then ask your question. We ask that everyone keep their questions brief and on topic. We will then mute you. In order to give everyone a chance to get their question answered, we won't be taking follow-up questions. If you do have a question and, and there's time, you can go ahead on back of the line and, and see if we can get you uh, that way. So anyway, um, we can go ahead and get started. Uh, and you've already asked the number one question in the chat, which was, how do you get the recipes? Because everyone was asking about that. So yeah, obviously they're, they're- I figured you would want them. And so we we typed them up and put a few photos in. Linda did it and help at chefaj.com. And realize this is Friday. I don't know who, if anybody's working over the weekend. So please like, don't get upset if you don't get it till Monday, guys. But I promise if you write that email address, we we we, we anticipated this and we would be happy to send it to you. So uh, thank you for that. So real quickly, you've been vegan for 40 years, you said. What do you, oh, sorry, go ahead. Well, it'll be 46 years on September 1st. Oh, wow. All right. Wow, yeah. 46 years. So congratulations on that. And uh, so what do you eat for uh, for lunch and dinner each day? Yeah, so well, to, I, my, <laughs> I eat the same thing every day for lunch because I love it. It's a Hannah yam. A Hannah yam, let me go get one to show you because everybody wants to know what a Hannah yam is. These are white sweet potatoes. These do not taste anything like orange sweet potatoes. The texture is more like a Yukon gold. And I look for the biggest one I can find, preferably weighing about two pounds. These are kind of white on the inside. And uh, like they're just like the most delicious food I've ever eaten. And I roast them for 90 minutes. I cut the tips off, roast them for 90 minutes. And uh, I can eat them cold. I can eat them hot. I can microwave them with a pound of broccoli I eat it every day for lunch because I want to, not because I have to. Once you eat these, you're not going to want to eat anything else. And so that's my lunch every day. Of course, if I travel, I'm not going to get that. I'm going to the Seattle Veg Fest. Who knows what I'll get? Or when I teach in Mexico, I don't get these. And then dinner, like for example, well, look at what we made tonight. I'm going to have the Brussels sprouts as my vegetable, and we're going to have the red lentil, red no lentil chili tonight. And um, probably put it over rice because I don't have any cooked potatoes. So dinner's a soup, a stew, a chili. You know, we have like a rotation. Last night it was the Thai no peanut sauce over a, a bunch of different vegetables, and actually, yeah, it was brown rice. But we we eat white rice here. We love it. Um, yeah, whole grains. You know vegetables, any kind of fruit, any kind of vegetable, uh, all kinds of winter squashes, kabocha, butternut, acorn. But, you know, if I had to pick one food, it would be potatoes or sweet potatoes. It's because like, I used to be overweight, like really overweight, obese, actually. And it wasn't until I started eating a lot of starch that I finally lost weight. Well, and now I know why you're, you're a fan of uh, McDougal. So yeah. Lots of, lots of potatoes. So and what is the best way you find to prep the, uh, the henny yams? So, so for me, I, I learned this from Chef Ramses Bravo at True North. A lot of people poke. And when you poke, you get a lot of oozy and you can mess up your oven. So what I do is I just take the tiniest, tiniest bit off the tip, both sides, tiny bit. So the steam escapes, no muss, no fuss. This size requires 90 minutes at 400. Smaller ones, maybe less time. And I can fit about seven of these on a tray. So I have enough you know, for a whole week. And, and I'm very lucky that my husband hates sweet potatoes. So nobody's stealing my sweet potatoes, you know, because most people would, would want this. Uh, most people that taste these, they're just a much different flavor than the orange. They're not mushy like the orange ones, and they're not as sweet as the orange ones, which is what I like about them. Okay. You might want to put that, I know it's a very simple recipe, but you might want to include that in that PDF file. Sure. That you're 